Greetings, and welcome to the basement. This is an overview video on using the L3DT tool for creating height maps for importing into Unity. Like over all of my overview videos, I'm not going to spend any great amount of time on the individual steps. Rather, the point is to show the fastest possible path for using the tool for its intended purpose. Like I said, getting a height map generated and imported into Unity. Now there are two versions of L3DT. There is a professional version and a standard version. The professional version does have more features than the free standard edition. However, for our purposes of getting a height map generated and imported into Unity, the standard's going to work just fine. Once you have acquired and installed L3DT, we need to create a new project. We're going to want to do a designable map. Here we can set the resolution and scaling of our height field. Notice down here where it says world size, 10 kilometer by 10 kilometer. This is a rough estimate and generally is incorrect as far as bringing it into Unity. It actually tends to be at least double that depending on some of the other settings. I'm going to set my initial resolution to 256 by 256 and then I'm going to change my horizontal scale down to 2 so that way I have a world size of 512 by 512. Moving on, we determine the height field to design map ratio. The larger this number, the coarser your design map will be, the smaller, the finer your design map will be. We're going to go with 32 as a mid-range option. Next we have to set the parameters for our map. Default climate doesn't really impact much for us. The only thing this really impacts is how the design map is colored. I personally prefer to work with Temperate Basic. Your mileage may vary. The presets down here refer to the presets for the actual sliders. I'm going to go ahead and load the default Scottish Highlands. Once you have these, added, these set the way you want, click on Next. And then we queue up all of the various maps that we want to generate. All we really need are the design map and the height field. Although I'm not going to generate the height field right from the start because I want to show how to do that in the tool. Clicking OK will get us our design map. Roughly speaking, this shows me what my high, the lighter colored areas, and low, the darker blue areas, are in my area, in my map. We can edit this, but that will be a future video. Once we have this design map set to how we want, we can go to Operations, Height Field, and to Generate Map. This will then generate a height field from our design map. If we are unsatisfied with the height field that was generated, we need to go back to the design map and regenerate it. And then after that has been regenerated, I can go back into the height field, regenerate the height field, and now I have a new map. You can also go into a 3D edit mode to directly edit the height field using some basic tools. Again, that will be under a future video. Once you have your height field the way you want it, we need to export it out. I'm going to right click on height field and say export layer. For the file format, I am going to want the raw file format. All of the other defaults should be fine. I'm going to set it to a easily found file name and hit OK. Now I'm ready to go over into Unity. I'm going to create a terrain and then I'm going to go into the settings for the terrain and I'm going to import a raw height field. I'm going to type in that path that I just saved my file to and it should automatically bring in all of the settings correctly. For my terrain size, even though you don't have to do this, I'm just going to go oops, and set my size to match my XZ or XY values, my width and height, my width and length, exactly. Hit import. And this is what I was talking about, how that area value doesn't really work good for Unity. 
that doesn't really give me a lot of playable area. It's way, way, way too vertical. Now, if I go into my settings and modify it to 2048 by 2048, a 4x increase on the resolution, assuming I remember to actually hit enter on this part here, now that looks a lot better in terms of a playable map area. I still have the same level of height variance, but it works a lot better. But I also don't want a 2048 by 2048 map because that is huge. So I'm going to bring it back down to 512 by 512. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the Terrain Toolkit. And I'm going to go to Normalize under Create. And I'm going to control the maximum height. Pull this down, let's say start off, just have the height, see what that looks like. That's still a little bit much. Let's pull it back down a little bit more. And I'll go ahead and leave it at that. Honestly, this particular randomized height field isn't the greatest for a single map because there's pretty much no way to keep the player off the edges. If I was going to continue, however, I would then go into texture. I would add in the uh, pink texture for my cliff. Add in grass. Change my slope to 33, 35. And then I would proceed on to edit my non-walkable areas. And of course, once I'm done with that, I would switch out the pink texture for a more standard cliff texture or whatever it is that you want on your vertical surfaces and go from there. And that's pretty much the basics. It's a pretty simple path. Just a real quick recap. We create a design map. Set our width and height and horizontal scale. Determine our height map to design map ratio. Just so you can see the difference, I'm going to set that to 128. Determine what our settings should be. This time I'm going to load Desert Mesas. Determine which maps we want right off the bat. I'm going to go ahead and generate both of them this time. And so that would be my height field for this one. And here's my design map. Not much resolution. And that's it. All right, future videos, we'll go over the features of L3DT and some workflow um, improvements. Other than that, until next time, have fun creating.